Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today I'll be going over an advanced knowledge problem of the week. For the problem of the week solution and problem transcripts, you can see the link in the video in the description of this video on our YouTube channel. So this week's advanced knowledge problem of the week was asking you to prove that given some A, which is an M by N matrix, it was asking you to prove that the kernel of A, also known as the null space of A, which is which is given by this set here, is a subspace of Rn. So in order to be a subspace of something, in this case a subspace of Rn, a, an object must satisfy three requirements. So I will go about this by proving them, the requirements one at a time. The first one is required to be proved first in order to prove the later two, or the second two. So OK, so the first. The first requirement here is going to be that the zero vector is included in the kernel of A. So the first thing we have to prove is that the zero vector is in fact in the kernel of A. So we know that the kernel of A is equal to the set of all vectors x such that A times x is equal to the zero vector. So we have this equation over here, and these x vectors must satisfy ax equals the zero vector. So we know that given some ax equals the zero vector, we can just plug in for x the zero vector and see if it still equals the zero vector. So we have a times the zero vector here, and anything times the zero vector is going to be the zero vector. And so therefore, we get that this is indeed the zero vector is indeed inside in uh, the set of the kernel of A. Therefore, the first requirement for a sub the first subspace requirement is satisfied. So now the second subspace requirement is that given two uh, x vectors, we'll call them x1 and x2, so both in the kernel of A. So we have here x1 is in the kernel of A, x2 is also in the kernel of A. We must now prove that x1 plus x2 is also in the kernel of A. OK, so we're going to use our basic assumptions here that x1 is in the kernel of A and x2 is in the kernel of A to prove this. So we know, as because of the definition of the kernel as the set up here, that x1 in the kernel of A implies that a times x1 is equal to the zero vector. And similarly for x2, x2 in the kernel of a implies that a times x2 is equal to the zero vector. OK, so I'm going to go over here. Uh, so, OK, so now we know that a times x1 is equal to the zero vector, and a times x2 is equal to the zero vector. So now we're going to consider a times quantity x1 plus x2. And we know that this is equal to a times x1 plus a times x2. And we know from over here that ax1 is equal to the zero vector and ax2 is equal to the zero vector. So we just know that this is equal to the zero vector plus, and this becomes a zero vector, and the zero vector plus the zero vector is equal to the zero vector. And we know from one, from the first requirement, that the zero vector is in the kernel of A. Therefore, we know that quantity x1 plus x2 is also in the kernel of A. Therefore, the second subspace requirement is also satisfied. So now, the third and final subspace requirement is that given some, given some vector x in the kernel of A and some constant c in R, we want to prove that c times x is also in the kernel of A. Okay, 
So in order to go about this, we are, as before, going to exploit the fact that we know that x in the kernel of A implies the following. So if x is in the kernel of A, that implies that A times x equals the zero vector. So now we want to consider, consider A times Cx. We know that because C is just some constant in R, that we can bring C to the outside. We can commute over here, C to the outside, and now we're left with A times the x vector. And as we see up here, A times the x vector is equal to the zero vector. So we see that this is equal to zero, oh, C times the zero vector, excuse me, which is just equal to the zero vector. And again, from the first requirement, from the first subset requirement, we know that the zero vector is in the kernel of A. Therefore, C times X for some X in the kernel of A and C in R is also in the kernel of A. Therefore, all three of these subspace requirements are satisfied. So we have just proven that for some M by N matrix A, that the kernel of A is a subspace of Rn. So for more, for more Problem of the Week videos, you can see our playlist here. To subscribe to us, you can click here. And to visit us at our website, you can visit here at centerofmath.org. Thank you for watching.